Greetings, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do some sheer and moment diagrams, one of my favorite things to do and a real bread and butter type of job for future structural engineers. Um, what we have here is a body that is in static equilibrium. Oftentimes on these problems, you're asked to also solve reactions, right? But we've already got a free body in equilibrium, so we don't need to solve reactions. We can jump straight into the graphic integration method for getting our shear diagram, which we will call V and our bending moment diagram M. Now, what we're actually plotting here is internal shear force and internal bending moment. And our sign convention looks something like this. A positive shear force, this is specific to the XY coordinate system there. Um, a positive shear force means that the left plane tends to move up while the left plane tends to move down. Um, a negative internal shear force has the opposite pattern. So the left plane tends to move down while the left, uh, the right plane tends to move up, right? So that's how we define our sign convention for internal shear force. This is pretty standard, by the way, this convention across different disciplines, across different countries. Um, that's not that's not always true for other things, other sign conventions in this class, but this, that shear force sign convention is pretty, pretty constant. Um, the bending moment one can be different in a few subfields, but the convention that we're going to use and the most typical convention is this one above the line. We're going to plot positive internal bending moments as uh, bending that results in a concave up or smiling type of geometry. And of course, below that line, we have a concave down or frowning type of geometry. All right, now that we've got our axes all ready to go for this problem, we are ready to start graphically integrating our load diagram into our shear diagram. All right, I think I'll just get a new layer for this procedure. All right, and we're going to start at zero, zero, follow the forces going from left to right. So we go upwards 11. Over four meters, we decrease three kilonewtons per meter. So we could be like, okay, one meter over, go down by three, another meter over, down by another three, da 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 da. But kind of the easiest way to do that is just to take the product of four and three here, turn that into an equivalent amount of force of 12 kilonewtons. And if I start at positive 11, take 12, that lands me at negative one here. Okay, then create a nice straight linear function to get down here to a negative one kilonewton. It is my preference, by the way, when I have values that are below V equals zero, I label the magnitude. I don't tend to put a negative sign here in front. I know some people do like to do that. It's not wrong, it's just a little different. I let the picture do the talking. Right, for the next four meters, we have zero, we have zero applied force here. And what that means is that our internal shear isn't changing. So we're gonna do a constant function, staying at one kilonewton. See if I can make that a little bit better. There we go. Until we get to X equals eight meters. Now we're gonna jump down by nine. That lands at 10 right there. So one plus nine gets me down to 10 kilonewtons. And then I'm gonna plateau once again until I get to X is equal to L. And I see my last force, 10 kilonewtons up. So let's just jump all the way back up to zero. Okay. Awesome. Our diagram is looking pretty good. Um, next step, 
we want to graphically integrate the shear diagram in order to produce our moment diagram. And in order to do that, we're going to want to get the areas under the curve. And I teach a tabular approach in my class for doing this kind of as you learn. But for this video, I'll kind of show you the way that I would be inclined to do this if kind of left to my own devices. All right, let's work from from left to right. So over this first part of the structure, I've got a positive triangle and I've got a negative triangle. So I'm going to separate that distance into two pieces. Call those x sub 1 and x sub 2. And the way that I'm going to solve that is that I'm going to take this shear coordinate, 11 kilonewtons, then I'm going to divide by the slope of that line. So we're thinking just, you know, slope equals rise over run. The slope of that line in the shear diagram is equal to the value in the free body diagram. That's because load is the derivative of shear. So I can put that three kilonewtons per meter right down here, simplify this out, and x1 is simply equal to 11 thirds meters. Okay. I'm just going to remove this to keep my workspace nice and tidy. And for x2, I'm just going to express that as the total distance 4 minus the partial distance 11 thirds. Both of those are in meters. Okay, so what I'm doing is taking this distance of 4, subtracting out that distance of 11 thirds. That leaves me this piece 4 minus 11 thirds meters. That's all I'm doing with that step. All right, let's get these areas underway. So this large positive area here, I'm going to call this area one. It has a base of 11 thirds meters. It has a height of 11 kilonewtons. And it is a triangle. So I want to get one half in the mix there. So these units are kilonewtons times meter, which is great because those are the units of bending moment. We can multiply this out and I'll just give you the result 20.16 bar. Let me get that bark a little clearer. 20.16 bar kilonewtons times meters. Next up, we need the little triangle. I'll call that area two. And I'm going to do all my areas as magnitudes. Again, I know some people like to put signs to show that whether the areas are positive or negative. I'm going to choose just to calculate these as magnitudes in this step. OK, so we've got a base of, that's x2, so 4 minus 11 thirds meters. We have a height of 1 kilonewton, all that divided by 2 because it's a triangle. That's in kilonewtons times meters. And that works out to be 0 0.16 bar kilonewtons times meters. That's what area 2 is. A large rectangle here will be area 3. This one's just a rectangle, so it's got a base of four, a height of one. That one's straightforward enough that I'm just going to jump to the product of to those two things, which is four kilonewtons times meters. And the last piece is a rectangle. So let's grab this one. Creatively, I will call this area four. It's also a rectangle. It's got a base of four meters and a height of 10 kilonewtons. So 10 times four gives me 40 kilonewtons times meters. So kind of keep these a little bit simple. 
again if you're uh, one of my students we did we did this in class with the tabular format this is another way to compute and label those areas and kind of keep things straight as you go into the graphic integration of shear to get your moment diagram all right let's zoom out a little bit and make this happen let's see pull up just a little bit i think that's i think that's it right there okay okay our shear diagram is done it is looking good time to do our moment diagram and just as before we're going to want to start at zero zero and work our way from left to right okay so over the first, actually, before I get going on this, I'm going to grab my ruler tool. I'm going to add a little dashed line here. OK, so I've got my my, you know, one, two, three, four gray lines from the original geometry. Those are all at four feet. I'm sorry, four meters apart from each other. See that at the top of the screen. And now I've got this other line, this yellow line that's demarcating um, where my shear function goes from a positive internal shear force to a negative one. All right, start at zero, zero. We want to increase by area one so that's going to get us up to 20 point one six bar and i think i'm just going to put my units over in the legend and by doing that i don't have to label every value right because i can let my legend communicate the units that i'm using kind of saves me a little bit of space on my diagram Another pro tip, by the way, is don't round these values off prematurely. When I'm doing shear moment diagrams, I make every effort to keep all the digits in my calculator. So I wouldn't want to round this off. You start to get a little bit of error at the end. That can be kind of problematic for students that are learning this for the first time. So I do recommend keeping all the digits in your calculator as much as you possibly can. You can use storage and memory and things like that in order to, to keep all the, the digits. OK, I'm going to do this by plotting the points first, and then I'm going to go back and do the, the, the functions themselves. And I like this technique when I'm teaching but for a couple reasons. Uh, a big one is the human brain is, has a hard time doing like four things at once. And that's kind of what you're doing when you're graphically integrating the shear diagram. So you're looking at the values. Those are the areas. You're looking at positive and negative areas. You're looking at whether functions are increasing or decreasing. And you're assessing whether the moment function is concave up or concave down. So that's four things you're trying to keep track of. If you develop a method that you partition them out and you're only doing one or two at a time, you'll have much greater success. The other thing I like about this method of first plotting points and then come drawing this, the function second is that if you get over to the end of your moment diagram and you're not at L comma zero, then you won't have spent a lot of time drawing those functions and you can go back and troubleshoot, especially like in an exam situation where you're working under the pressure of a clock. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind. All right, so for the first segment, I've increased up to 20.16. Why did I increase? It's because the shear area is positive. Okay, now I want to decrease. This is a negative shear area. So I decrease by area two, and that gets me back down to 20. Another pro tip here is try to draw these um, to scale as best you can. Try to draw these to scale as best you can. So if I was trying to draw this to scale, I would actually want to just nudge this up ever so slightly, right? The difference between those points is, is very, very minimal. All right, um, now we're ready to deal with this applied uh, moment. So we've got 24 kilonewtons times meters cranked into our beam. And this is, um, we've got to figure out the sign convention for this. And my suggestion is to memorize this. My suggestion is to memorize this. If you have an applied moment that is clockwise, you jump up in your moment diagram and if you're 
applied moment is counterclockwise, so clockwise versus counterclockwise, then you want to jump down. And so our particular one is a clockwise bending moment. And so we want to jump up. So we're at 20. We want to increase by 24. That puts us at 44, right about up here. And even though I'm not drawing on graph paper, note that I'm trying making an effort to draw pretty close to scale. If you have graph paper, you can get these even closer. All right, now that we're done with that applied moment, we're kind of back to business as usual. Area three is negative, so we decrease by four. 44 minus four is 40. And then we want to decrease by area four. 40 minus 40 gets me back to zero. And it's important, each and every moment diagram will close out. It will land at zero due to equilibrium. If you do not get to zero, if you're in a homework situation, go back and troubleshoot, find your error, fix it. If you're in an exam situation and run out of time, at the very least, make a comment that says, oops, something is wrong here. I know I should get back to zero, um, but for some reason, my calcs aren't adding up. All right, now we get to connect the dots. It's just like kindergarten. Um, and everywhere where we see a constant function in shear, that means we have a linear function in moments. So I can just connect these two. I can just connect these two. This was our jump. So I know that this is going to go like this. I, I'm sorry, I did that backwards. I did that backwards. Okay, so this is our jump. We jump from 20 up to 44. So instead of connecting 20 and 40, we need to connect 44 and 40 like that. Sorry about that. Um, I'll also note that in a grading situation, I would love it if your curves and lines are at all ambiguous. Like I could imagine looking at this and it kind of looks like it's got a curvature. Let's go ahead and label it as linear so that whoever's reviewing my work knows without a shadow of a doubt that that's a linear function and not a, a um, quadratic or cubic or higher order function. Okay, now we're ready to deal with this. So our shear diagram is decreasing in value from left to right. That means that my moment diagram is concave down. So you're going to want to connect those with a nice smooth parabola that peaks at 20.16 bar, and ends here at 20 before the jump. And that is, that is it. Um, I will do one more little piece of labeling here, right? So we know that this is a quadratic function or parabolic because my shear function is linear and my shear function is the derivative of the moment function. So we're just increasing the order of x for each segment as we do the integration method. That is the solution to the shear moment diagram problem. I hope this was helpful to you. Have a great day.